Right, are you ready for some silly questions that are coming up? Yes, hit me. First question. What was your first screen name and why did you were you named that? Ooh. Well, I've used the Mighty Seven thing for quite a long time actually. And I like everyone asks me whether it's like meaningful or important and the answer is no because I made it up when I was twelve. Um and it, it was just to it was just to do with like the fact that the number seven is like it's a sort of special number like lucky number seven type thing and and you know it's the when you ask people to think of a number between one and ten apparently most of the time they'll just say seven so i was like oh that's fun yeah let's let's do that um i just made, totally made it up was on a message board about probably about duke nukem 3d because that's what i was interested in at the time and yeah i made it up so that was my first screen name it doesn't mean anything really doesn't mean anything but it's stuck and i i still have it and weirdly Here's an interesting story for you. Well, not that interesting, but weird. I got contacted by Avril Lavigne's guitarist who was trying to set up a record label with the same name and wanted my... I have the Twitter account, Twitter handle, and he was like, can I have it? Or does it have sentimental value? And I said it has sentimental value. And so he went away. I was sort of hoping he'd be like, here's 100 grand to buy your Twitter handle, in which case I would have been like, it doesn't have that much sentimental value. But uh, he didn't. He went away, so. Nuts. Ah, nuts. All right. (laughs) So this one is going to be quite good because you're very into food. I love food. I eat it every day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. Sometimes more than once. (laughs) Would you rather have unlimited sushi for life or unlimited tacos for life? Tacos. I tacos Ooh. yeah I, I think i'd get bored of sushi like, i like sushi and it's kind of like fresh and feels healthy and stuff but i do love do love mexican food taco tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and monday please <laughs> oh brilliant this one is gonna be quite good i think what is the funniest place you've ever fallen asleep oh i'm really good at sleeping i I I can I can sleep just about anywhere. I think it just is because I don't go to bed early enough. I don't know if it's funny, but I did manage to fall asleep during like Formula One free practice at Silverstone on the inside of a corner at Silverstone. And this was like back when the engines were really loud and really coarse. But even in spite of that, I was able to like doze off. Were, were you in sunny day? Uh, were you in one of the, the cars? Race. Sorry. Oh, you were at the race. Okay. Not, not in. The <laughs> car, no. No, I, was at, I was at the race, but sitting spectating. But as these like, right. extremely noisy racing cars went past, and I was still able to fall asleep. Um, I have also fallen asleep in a car in a Lotus Elise, which is a very uncomfortable car, uh, as anyone who will know who's been in one. I was in the passenger seat. My friend, who will remain nameless, was driving quite quickly down the motorway and i managed to doze off in there as well so i can sleep anywhere i've slept i've slept an entire flight from montreal to london before oh wicked i'm just good i'm just good at sleeping oh classic do you have any superstitions no not i'm not like a terribly superstitious person to be honest i'm like uh I think it's i think they're kind of fun though right like my friend was like oh when you're getting into a race car You've got to do up your your harness, it like anti-clockwise or clockwise or something. Um, but I not really. No, I I'm like, I yeah, I'm very, I'm like very sciencey, very sort of practical. So I don't really believe in anything other than science. So yeah, not. Were really Were your parents superstitious? superstitious? Well, yeah, I mean, my I, I you know I've got Irish Catholic on on, and if you, if you want to call Catholicism a really big superstition, then yeah, they were super superstitious. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not really something that was ingrained in me that much, to be honest. So, who or where would you haunt if you were a ghost? Mm, that's a good question that's a good question because usually when you're a ghost you sort of like um haunt the upstairs of a really run down house and you go ooh. yeah that's rubbish that's that's yeah it's def- I'm definitely not, not gonna haunt that it would probably be somewhere like entertaining so like maybe disneyland would be a good place to haunt because you kind of go on the rides and stuff <laughs> or 
Or like, yeah, motor racing circuit. So maybe I would haunt like the Nurburgring or something, right? There's a big castle there. I can hang out in the castle, probably have a pretty good view of the racing. And that would keep me going for hundreds of years. Yeah. Probably. So maybe the Nurburgring. I, I think it's kind of gothy. I mean, you know, like there are other racing circuits, but Silverstone's not particularly gothy. Uh, Le Mans, not particularly gothy. But I think, yeah, Castle Nurburg. I think I'll probably haunt there. And watch the watch the cars race around every every year for the twenty four hours. There you go, you got got the best of all the worlds. Nailed it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate uh, appreciate you giving me your time. Of course. Today. I, I I'm not going to stand on formalities. <laughs> it just reminded me of the formalities because like that that when we met, like we shook hands and I was like, my name is Tom, and you were mm. like, my name is Mike, and it's sort of like the I I know. But <laughs> like I, I really loved how grounded you were and like how polite and and very nice you yeah. were. Yeah. Like and I think I, I think we've been very lucky. You know, like it's it's lovely meeting meeting fans. Um, you know, it's something we've been sort of robbed of over the last couple of years. Um, and, and we're we're sort of super keen to get back to that that stuff because it's it's great. And again, it comes back to like you know you can look at the numbers and the millions and millions of people who watch, you know, videos every month, but like, it's a really nice reminder that each of those people is, is an, is an actual person. And, and that's, that's just cool. Like, you know, and that keeps you grounded because it, you know, everyone's got a slightly different take. Everyone's got a different favorite video. Everyone's got something that, you know, connects, you know, helps connects them you to maybe. Them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, we've, we've really missed that stuff and we're, we're sort of getting back into it with like the Oxventure live shows and things like that. But, I, we haven't quite got gotten back to the kind of meet and greet stuff that we were doing at live shows, and I'm looking forward to us doing that again. Hopefully, in a sort of relatively COVID safe yeah. kind of way. Yes, um, yes. And I think we might we might have a solution for that. So hopefully, hopefully soon. And speaking of America, like we'd love to get back out to PAX East next yeah. year. I think that's like a target for us, and we'd we'd love to sort of make that our triumphant return to the states and to to sort of cons over there, basically. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, obviously like we, we love reading the comments and we've, we've got a, a great, a great audience and, and you're part of that, you know, obviously you're like, like your name is familiar oh, to us, you. you know, it's really nice to see you pop up on, on live streams and comments and things like that. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's cool. And we, we do feel like it's a little, a little family we've built and, and we've managed to, I think by hopefully giving out good vibes that that's sort of created this, this kind of audience that gives us good vibes back right like we're not you know we're not screaming and shouting and being you know we're kind of sarcastic about video games and poking fun at them but we're not like there's not a lot no. of hate going on really um to be a place where you know people can just hang out and forget about their problems for a bit and yeah hopefully meet some like-minded people and, and you know like not not to sort of push the the supporters club thing but that's been a really nice again like subsection of our sort of our 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 biggest fans or the fans at least our biggest fans who are able to support us and we we really wanted again to with that that sort of patreon thing you know like obviously patreon is a is, is a big deal for a lot of creators and it it's you know it's there it's the way they get to keep going and that's obviously not the case for us you know we are we are doing okay but it's a way to support us uh, but we really wanted to make sure it was kind of like very you know there's only one tier and it's the it's the smallest possible payment that like patreon would let us charge people and it's totally optional and the, you get to join the discord and hang out as a kind of little kind of clubhouse type thing there's got to be some benefit to it but we never wanted to like lock content off from people who can't pay for it so that's that's been the vibe with that and again it's been a really nice sort of way to interact more directly you know we've got the kind of ask the team channel on there which is where we most mostly hang out oh i do love that and that's been really nice yeah, it's it's just fun, isn't it? You know, it's a fun. It's like it's sort of like certainly when we set it up, I was a bit like it's sort of like a, a replacement for Twitter, but where it's like good vibes only. Whereas when I scroll through Twitter, it's like the world is on fire and everyone's terrible and corruption is rife. Um, whereas I go to the Eric Supporters Club Discord, and I'm like everyone's nice, and I get to just answer a few questions and have a few chats, and you know, it's it's like it's like social media but nice, basically. So. Um, so yeah, and thank you for your for your part in that, basically, and for contributing. Um, and no, I was very very happy to support you. And it, it's one of those things where it's like it's really good of you all to acknowledge, like you're you're making this for us at when we're available because uh, content overload can be like a massive strain on like 
and like i know like i i get a little bit sometimes where it's like i love keeping up with what you what you're doing but i can't always yeah. like like catch up sometimes and okay. it's overwhelming but um i'm more than happy to to help support you all because of all the love and support that you guys have done through your videos to to all of us and you continue to do it and that's something no, very... we we i mean we don't don't get us wrong it's it's fun as well you know we, we love making that stuff you know it's it's great and we're all massive show-offs and you know that that manifests itself in D and 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 stuff like that um but uh but yeah it's um it's fun it is fun and it's it's great to get like good vibes back basically so um yeah hopefully we'll still be here in a few more years five five at least maybe even another decade but it's weird because i'm i've got that same sort of same feeling i had like 10 years ago which is like surely in 10 years i'll have a proper job but who knows you know like youtube's youtube's a different place yes. now from from 10 years ago you know like you know, when we started again it felt like we were competing with a bunch of teenagers in their bedrooms but all those teenagers are now like nearly 30 so you know um and and the audience is only growing right and everyone watches youtube now so uh not it's like uh, you got the younger like generations coming up yeah so you know maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll still be able to do this for for a long time yet but you know it's um it's fun we've got plans for oxventure and that's a that's a really interesting like intriguing sort of offshoot and not everyone's not everyone's into Oxventure, which is totally totally fine. But it, for us, it's it's another thing to keep us interested and entertained. We'll probably keep doing what we do, which is we you know these, making these these particularly these list features, doing a bit of Jackbox, playing the odd game that interests us, and having fun in the Discord. And that's that's definitely going to keep us busy for a while. We're not. I, what amazes me is we've run run out of ideas for list features yet. I mean, you know, it's it. <laughs> we've been doing this for ten years now. And somehow we still somehow managed to come up with something for every single week, which is and it's so fresh. Kind of refreshing, really. It's so fresh. Yeah, it's just it's... brilliant. <laughs> it's weird. It's it's weird to still be here because you you do get that slight panic every time you're like, okay, got to think of another list feature idea. And we have like month some monthly ish brainstorms and stuff to try and come up with ideas and things. And there are still still some ideas out there. I had one today. So oh, brilliant! Still exist. You just gotta, you just gotta look a little harder for them, basically, than you used to. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you making the time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, no, it's absolutely fine, and you know, like, th thank you for your support as well. Like, like I say, it doesn't go unnoticed. Like, you know, we we see uh, the you know familiar names pop up and people who sort of contribute to to our lovely community, and so yeah, it's the least I could do. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you so it's, much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Oh, cool. Thank you so much. And I will see you all next time. That's been my channel and Tom Phil Tivers. <laughs> Bye.